Hey, good afternoon. I'm Marshall Courier with NAD Electronics. Sorry about the delay. We've got a great show for you today talking about uh, the D3045 and desktop audio. Desktop audio is a big deal right now, obviously. We're doing, uh, you know, we're doing a lot at home. And uh, we're thrilled to get an opportunity to speak to you, talk to you about desktop audio, and talk to you about a couple of cool products. So, one... Uh, I want to mention to you a promotion that we're doing. One of the reasons why we're choosing the D3045 as a, as a promotional piece or as a, as a topic today is we are running a discount, a promotion option on the D3045. So this, this solution is $100 off at retail at participating NAD dealers. So you'll see a lot of promotion around the D3045. Um, it's, it's on sale right now until May 15th, so that's pretty significant. And uh, what's exciting about that is it's perfect for a desktop audio system, and the D3045 is perfect for a future system. So, you know, whether it's uh, a system you're growing into, a new system, you're upgrading your desktop audio system, it's really an incredible product. So, we'll talk about that today. Following my short presentation, we'll then do some Q&A. So, uh, we'd love to get your questions. Uh, we're doing a couple different things here with questions, so... Uh, just get your questions into us, and uh, I see uh, see some folks in there. The M32, hi from South Africa. Good to see you. So, um, so yeah. So we'll talk about the uh, the the D3045. Uh, then we'll get to the Q&A. If I don't get to your questions today, we will make sure to get to them uh, after the fact. So keep the questions flowing, no matter what. If we don't answer the question live we will make sure to get it answered electronically at some other point uh, later in the video. And hey, if, uh, if we like your questions, if things go well, we'll be doing more of these in the future. So we're looking forward to, uh, to talking with you about this. So uh, again, we're about the D3045, and um, I'll show you a little shot here of, uh, of a cool setup. As a lot of you know, desktop audio, as a lot of you know, desktop audio uh, can mean different things to different people. Right, we have, you know, if you have a laptop set up like I do, uh, over my shoulder here, you've got laptop speakers, and then most desktop audio systems you kind of start out with are uh, you know, much smaller active speakers with a little volume control there on the front. Um, what makes one of our, our, our key products, the, the 3045, so special is that it's designed for desktop audio. It's, it's small, it's compact, uh, has a great form factor. Uh, it's got lots of different features. But what's cool about it is you can stand it up next to your computer like I have here. And then if you want to grow your system down the road, you can lay it down on its side. It's a very, very easy, uh, easy solution to repurpose. Uh, you can connect it into your home audio system. You can use it with your you know, desktop audio system as we're talking about today. Uh, the 3045 is a really cool piece and very, very flexible in terms of its form factor. It has uh, two vents on the sides and these, these vents here, uh, you really only operationally need one vent. So you can actually lay it down on its side, cover up one vent on the other side. It has plenty of ventilation. So it works great in so many different applications. It's really a cool piece. Uh, so in addition to kind of fits anywhere and all that, uh, my, my favorite feature is you can connect it to a passive loudspeaker. So remember, most desktop audio systems are kind of all in one, right? Most desktop audio systems are uh, a, a powered speaker with a volume control in the front and a couple of wires plug into your headphone jack on your computer. Analog outputs on a, on a laptop or a desktop are great. What makes the D3045 special in uh, your desktop audio system, one of the cool things, is you can use any passive loudspeaker you want. You're not limited to pairing it up with whatever's built in, you know, built into your system. So I have, so I have here my, my P3s uh, by PSB. These are incredible. Um, they don't go down very low. Uh, we have we we sell separately uh, an outboard subwoofer or a separate subwoofer with for PSB with that. But you can use these passive speakers and wire it in there to the binding post there on the back of the D3045. Again, I kind of prefer the option of choosing whatever speaker I want. Um, one of the cool things I've also seen is you can do in ceiling speakers. So if you've got you know in an office or uh, kind of in an open space. If you've got some in-ceiling speakers or in-wall speakers, you can wire it up that way too. So again, lots of different combinations of speakers with the 3045. Uh, 
Another great feature about the 3045 is it connects almost any audio source. You know, I mentioned a few minutes ago talking about desktop audio. You, with most other competitive systems, you run the uh, the headphone output from the laptop into that desktop audio system. Well, what's different about the 3045 is it features USB. So with USB, I'm using the, the digital clock in the NAD unit, and I'm not using any kind of compromised analog audio output of the laptop or of the, of the desktop. So by using USB with the 3045, I get one volume control, and that volume control can be in the computer. And then in addition to that, I get much better quality sound because I'm using a digital connection and it's asynchronous, meaning that I'm using the timing clock, the, uh, the precision timing clock, and the DAC in the NAD versus the DAC and the laptop. So it's, a, it's, it's really, really nice to use USB. One of the big differentiators compared to any desktop audio system versus any kind of home audio system, inclusion of USB. You gotta have USB audio in there. And then for the geeks out there, we also feature MQA playback, MQA decoding, full uh, unfolding of, of MQA audio files, not just a rendering, but a full decode on the 3045. And then we also do DSD, uh, quad rate DSD up to 256 or 384 kilohertz. So, you know, in terms of the DAC topology, very, very, very uh, uh, good. Now, in terms of working with your phone, if you want to stream stuff, uh, we offer Bluetooth. One of the super cool things about the 3045 is that we do Bluetooth in two ways. So we'll do uh, out to some headphones or in from your phone. So think about this. Uh, you can use the, the, the 3045 at your desk. But then let's say you want to listen to YouTube and have lunch uh, or, you know, watch a video um, and use your wireless headphones and you're not really necessarily near your computer or if it's an open space, you want to, you know, lots of different people are using an open listening session. You can, you can go in on USB on the 3045 and then out to a pair of headphones. And that's just an awesome experience. I mean, just having the ability to just volume up, volume down on a, on a pair of nice headphones. Uh, that's a, that's a really great experience. So we talked about Bluetooth uh, in and out. We talked about uh, working with a laptop with USB. Uh, the, the a couple of final applications I'll discuss is it also works with your television set. So the 3045 also features HDMI, so you can actually take uh, audio off of your set top box or uh, cable or satellite box, as well as off of say or just your television set audio return channel. Uh, right into your home audio system. And you can use this in a home audio system and like I said earlier, kind of grow um, grow your system as your needs change. But, you know, some, some of us have televisions in our offices, uh, so that's another nice thing is you have the input selector on the, on the front uh, and I can just choose between, you know, TV, if I have a TV in my office, uh, and I can go back to using my computer when I'm, you know, off, off of a break or what have you. So, super, super cool to have all the different input options they're using with the TV and HDMI with audio return channel. Uh, so in terms of, um, let, let's kind of talk about some of the more technical features. In terms of power, you're looking at about 60 watts a channel. And what's different about our NAD3045 is that it's a hybrid digital platform. And what's interesting is this is actually um, a platform that we've used in award-winning products like our, our C368 and C388. Uh, those are award-winning. The Absolute Sound said the 368 was the best integrated amplifier, I think at under $3,000, so very, very, uh, very, very gr great amp. Uh, this is the little brother to the 368, the C368. This product by itself, the 3045, also won Soundstage's product of the year uh, in 2019. So really, really great solution there in terms of power. You know, we are known for very, very musical, very, very dynamic uh, performance in terms of the audio uh, power. And uh, the last thing I'll say about power is we use a technology that's load invariant. So our hybrid digital platform is load invariant. So it doesn't matter if it's a 4-ohm speaker or an 8-ohm speaker, the NAD will modify its output power to drive uh, the same amount of power into different loads dynamically. Uh, it's self-oscillating. It's a very unique design. You can read more about that. We've got some white papers on the 3045 and the 3020, which use a similar platform. Less power in the 3020, but they use a similar platform on NADElectronics.com. Uh, a few other uh, a few other technical features. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the, the back panel here. I want to show you the back panel. Had some problems there with the audio. 
So the back panel features, I mentioned USB earlier, plus multiple optical inputs, digital, digital coax. Um, we feature uh, HDMI with audio return channel, and then my favorite, you gotta have them, analog audio inputs. It still does analog audio, both RCA size as well as uh, 3.5 millimeters, so full size RCA. Now what's cool in terms of the inputs and the outputs, lots of flexibility, but you can also use a subwoofer with the 3045. You know, these little PSB P3 sound fantastic and they sound great on my desk. The desk gives it a bit of a boost. Uh, but if you really want that deeper bass, if you have a big open space, um, you can use a subwoofer with the N80-3045. Uh, and that subwoofer is a stereo subwoofer output right down into your subwoofer there. Uh, and then, you know, long term, if you ever wanted to add, maybe, you know, an upper amplifier to this, if you wanted to mix it up and have, you know, a more powerful amplifier, you could also do that. There are pre-amplifier outputs. So the subwoofer outputs double um, for a pre-amplifier. I'll show you the back panel. Cool. So that's the little back panel shot of the 3045. So uh, we'll get into questions here in just a minute. Uh, I finally want to mention the 3045 also features a little remote control. Uh, it's actually a nice you know, semi-thick plastic remote control. Um, if, uh, if this remote control, you know, it works well, it does all the features you want. But if you're using this with a television set, the 3045 will also learn commands from the television set like mute and power as well as automatic on. So this unit will actually turn itself on as you are uh, powering your TV setup if you happen to have use it with a television set. Uh, but the remote control does all the basic features. And then if you pair it with Bluetooth to a device, you even get transport control features there on the bottom of the remote control also, also included. But technically speaking, you know, I, I mentioned the HDMI, I mentioned the asynchronous USB, uh, all the analog inputs. I'll, I'll, I'll remind you again, this also decodes MQA, does the full MQA unfold. So if you're getting MQA off of Tidal, uh, if you're getting, if you're downloading files using MQA technology, we will do full MQA uh, decoding, and you'll actually have a Providence indicator there on the front panel. It'll actually say MQA there on the front panel. It'll give you a little indic indicator there as well. If using a different high-resolution service like Cobuzz, uh, we also work up to 24192 on on digital audio inputs and up to 24384 on the USB input. So lots of different flexibility there in terms of the high-resolution. Uh, formats and things like that. So uh, th that's a brief walkthrough, kind of brief. Sorry again about the delay. If you just join us, I'm Marshall Courier with NAD. We're going to get to your questions now. We did a little prelude to talk, talking about the 3045 the desktop audio. So if you have any questions, uh, put them there into the into the chat. We'll, we'll get to them uh, hopefully right now. Again, if we don't get to all the questions today, we'll make sure to uh, answer them electronically. Uh, here in a little bit. So let's let's jump into some questions here right now. So question number one is from Ray and Ray writes in and he says, why would I choose the D3045 over the D3020 version 2? Oh Ray, great great question. So the 3045 uh, offers a couple of critical things the 3020 doesn't. And I hope I said 3020 earlier. So 3045 versus 3020. Number one you get USB audio. So if you're using it with a desktop system, uh, the 3045 feature USB audio, uh, MQA decoding, all the high resolution formats including DSD. So for a desktop system, the 3045 is, is almost perfect. Uh, the 3020 doesn't offer USB, you know, it has digital audio, the 3020 is, is, is good, but the 3045 does offer more power. Both of them offer subwoofer outputs and things like that. The 3045 has a few more uh, input options. HDMI is a big one, so if you are using it in a home, the 3045 features HDMI with audio return channel. Uh, the 3020 does not. Uh, both of them just do stereo. We're not talking Dolby or DTS, but HDMI is a big one. So uh, my suggestion to you, Ray, turn the back panel around on both of them. Take a look at the back, because that'll really explain kind of what I'm talking about with USB and HDMI. Uh, and then in terms of power, if you've got, you know, medium to large speakers, the 3045 is the one to go with, okay? And it's on sale right now. It's 100 bucks off. So question number two, uh, Richie on Facebook says, is it Rune ready? Great question, Richie. So, you know, Rune, for, as a primer for lots of folks, you know, Rune is a, is a great music system. It's kind of it's kind of what all these other music systems of the 90s and the early 2000s. One of the bigger platform offers streaming integration, local library integration, and Rune is a technology partner of NAD and some some of our sister brands. 
Um, the 3045 can be used with Rune with a desktop system beautifully. It's a USB output. It's recognized there. Uh, there in Rune, it works very, very, very well. So yeah, you can use it as a Rune endpoint via USB. Um, how, just keep in mind, it does not do any network audio. So you know, neither, the 3045 doesn't offer audio over the network. It does need to be a local connection to a computer or a Rune nucleus or something like that, a NUC, whatever you may have, all right? Good questions here. Uh, question number three from Joe on Instagram. Uh, what speakers will pair well with the 3020? So, so, so Joe's asking about the 3020. It's a, it's the model. Um, it's the entry level model. The 3020, believe it or not, Joe can almost play into any speaker. I've seen the 3020 uh, play into Magna Pants, which are difficult to drive. I've seen them play into some big, some big British speakers. Um, you know what's important about it is you can go. Good. You can go large. You can you can do a, a large bookshelf or a, or a small tower speaker with a 3020. You got to keep a couple things in mind. If the room gets to be a good size, Joe, you need to have you know some output, some serious output. So it really depends on how how live the room is. If it's a big room, uh, if the room is very very, you know, uh, bright sounding. Um, you know, those things you got to keep in mind. If, if the room is big and dark sounding, in other words, it absorbs a lot of uh, sonic information or sound, then you may need some more power. But if it's a medium to smaller room, if you're listening closely, if you're sitting, you know, 10 feet away, and if you have sensitive speakers, the 3020 can play almost into any speaker. And I personally categorize speakers uh, with the Canadians, the Brits, and then, you know, everybody else, the French and the Danes, right? So uh, some of that, some of those kind of sound quality um, traits can be carried country to country, but uh, the 3020 can really play into any speaker. Great questions, by the way. Uh, can the 3045 be turned uh, on using an app? or by connecting to Bluetooth, or is it only via HDMI? Great question, Jason. So uh, we offer a feature called TV Connect, and TV Connect allows you to use any remote control to turn on the 3045 number one. So no matter how you connect it with our feature called TV Connect, you can have the remote from any device you have, an Apple TV, television set, whatever you have, Roku, if it's IR, it can turn on the 3045. Uh, with regards to um, things like Bluetooth, we don't have automatic on, but we have automatic turn on with optical. So if you're using either of the two optical inputs, it can turn on automatically with optical. So uh, one nice feature. And I will mention while we're talking about turning things on, there is an automatic standby feature. So make sure that with automatic standby, uh, you're up to speed there. The unit doesn't turn itself off because it will turn itself off automatically. Uh, question uh, number five here from uh, Nicholas. Can it drive a larger bookshelf speaker like a CAF R300 instead of a three, uh, 326? Believe it or not, the, the, C, the NAD C326 is um, about the same power platform, if, uh, if not a little less power than the 3045. So the 3045 is, in, in terms of power, I'll put the same. So you should have no problem with the CAF. The CAF, uh, the R300, just I'm going from memory here, Fairly sensitive, reasonable sensitivity. I want to say it's like 89 dB in room. Anechoic is different from in room, uh, but it's a six ohm. It's a six ohm speaker, I do believe. So the nice thing about NAD is we are loaded in variance, so you should have no problem driving a six ohm speaker uh, for a nominal impedance. So so go to town. Pick uh, pick up a 3045 for that R300. Question number six here. Uh, can I hook up speakers to any D-Series amp? That's Gary from Instagram. Uh, great question, Gary, on any speakers with the D-Series. So um, I'll show you the back of the 3045 here. It does have uh, classic binding posts. So very traditional binding posts, multi-way binding posts. So you just spin these out and then slide in the speaker cable. And then you can use banana pins and go into the back I, either way. If it's bare wire, you go into the side. If it's a banana pin, you go into the top. I like banana pins because after five or six years of using it, you want to make sure that all the terminations are clean and they haven't, um, there's no corrosion or no, no uh, deterioration. So, but yeah, in terms of, uh, in terms of connections uh, to any of these series, all of the NAD products in the D-series binding posts. So no issues there with high quality binding posts. 
Yeah, um, a question from uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Dim Dimitrov, if I'm pronouncing that right, from uh, Mitko on Facebook. Uh, would you explain more about NAD soft clipping? Yeah, so, you know, over the years, we have a lot of different technologies built into our products. Um, NAD power drive, NAD soft clipping, and a lot of these technologies have to do with, you know, real people using real speakers in real listening scenarios. And one listening scenario to keep in mind is dynamic music. So as you're changing the channel in the television set, or if you're listening to different music throughout the evening, you know, you can have really different dynamic range considerations to keep in mind. And with soft clipping, if you ever have a condition where, um, you know, you're listening to a song and you, it's a, maybe it's a new song you haven't heard before and there's a lot of dynamics in the set, the signal feeding into the amplifier is going to require the amplifier to drive those speakers in a really big way, lots of volume. Soft clipping is a circuit that we've put in as a safety mechanism to provide a little bit of correction on the very, very top end so that when there's a big uh, dynamic passage, when there's a big dynamic passage, the, um, the speaker is not overdriving, or the amplifier is not overdriving the speaker, and, and it could damage tweeters and damage the things like that. You know, uh, typically power doesn't, doesn't blow a speaker, distortion blows a speaker. So when, that, when the NAD senses that distortion, that, that high, high gain, it rolls off the top end to kind of protect your, uh, to protect your loudspeakers. Questions are coming. I love, I love the questions. Again, if we don't get to all your questions today, live, uh, just keep, keep pump, uh, uh, keep filling them in into the comment section. We'll make sure we get to them. Uh, no matter what. Uh, question number seven: Can you recommend a learning remote for a D3020 version one? You know, Brad, that's Brad on Facebook talking about learning remotes. The hard part about our learning remote is it really, did, it's, it's not controlling the amplifier. Lots of remotes control the 3020. Uh, the hard part is making sure it controls everything else you have. Um, you know, so if you've got, you know, uh, game systems and streaming boxes and, uh, you know, add-on accessories and things like that, does it do all my smart TV functions? You know, depending on how you use your electronics, some of these TV functions uh, require extra buttons to, to interface with. So I would look at uh, taking, do an assessment of all the, all the devices you have and then say, uh, does this remote control control all those different devices? It's going to control the 3020. The 3020 has the, the TV Connect feature. Um, so no, no issues there. And really, remember on the amplifier side, all you really need is turn on volume, mute, and that's about it. You know, input, input source selection is nice. But the last thing I'll leave you with, Brad, about the, the IR control is we've got a couple, a couple different custom IR settings with the 3020. So if you visit nadelectronics.com on the 3020's product page, you'll be able to see um, a couple different custom IR configurations and some hex codes and things. So if we don't have the command you need, you can also reach out to us at support at nadelectronics.com. So uh, that's in the, some of the questions we've, we've uh, been seeing. Uh, we've got, uh, got those answered. Uh, I think we're good. There we go. Question number eight. Good stuff. What does Aptex Bluetooth do for me from Scott? So I, I mentioned Bluetooth earlier in the top of the top of the video. You can rewind to see that. Uh, we offer two-way Bluetooth on the D3045 over my shoulder here. Lots of our products feature two-way Bluetooth. Again, Bluetooth can be used as an input from your phone or from an iPad uh, to the NAD unit, and then it can be used as an output. So from the NAD unit over my shoulder here to a pair of, of headphones. Um, so Aptex is a technology that uh, certain devices have. iPhones sometimes don't have Aptex, but MacBooks have Aptex, like my MacBook over my shoulder here. And then almost every Android phone has Aptex, and every PC computer has Aptex. And Aptex is a technology that allows for 24-bit audio. We do Aptex HD in a lot of our products, um, but Aptex is basically better quality Bluetooth. It's, it's better quality um, uh, Bluetooth, and it's exciting because uh, you can hear the difference. You know, Bluetooth is is kind of a, a you know a, a, a technology that really changes depending on what manufacturer's products you're using. So yeah, Aptex Bluetooth, uh, quality Bluetooth. The catch is you got to have Aptex on both ends. Aptex has to be on the device 
like your tablet, and it's got to be on the NAD unit, which all of our NAD products feature Aptex. Uh, question number nine from David, uh, 777. He has, this is a home theater receiver question. Um, T777, he's thinking about doing an M27. David's thinking about a 777. Uh, he currently has a 777. He's wanting to possibly go to an M27. Um, and in terms of the connections, he's curious about the connections. Well, first of all, David, uh, the 777 is a wonderful amplifier, really, really nice amplifier. Uh, in order to add any outboard amplifier, and that, and that goes for the 3045 here as well, to add any outboard amplifier to um, your NAD unit, you got to look at the pre-amplifier outputs, the pre-amplifier outputs. And those are the RCA jacks on the back that say output. It's got to say output. And that will allow you to add in any amplifier, uh, whether it be the, M the M27 or a 268. If you wanted to add another amplifier to this guy, you could do that. It has pre-amplifier outputs. Uh, they are parallel with the receiver, so they track with the volume control, and they are uh, RCA cables. So any basic RCA cable will work. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is you need to make sure you have the right channel numbers. You know, if you have seven speakers, the M27 is perfect. If you want to go with Atmos, um, you may want to mix and match and use different amplifiers because the M27 is going to be great for, you know, your ear height speakers. But if you want a little bit less power or a different amp for your in-ceiling speakers, if you have Atmos, then you could do a product like our CI980 uh, or our, our CI8120 which is terrific. It's a brand new amplifier, the CI8120, and that's a great application for uh, in-ceiling speakers or other non-ear height speakers, if you know what I mean. Great question there from David. Uh, question number 10, uh, do I need any extra components to connect a turntable to the 3045? Great question. So the 3045 over my shoulder here does feature a phono input. And what's interesting is there are two different types of phono cartridge voltages, and there are actually more than two, but two, two big camps, two big buckets. Uh, there's moving coil, which is a very, very low output current uh, or voltage, and there's moving magnet. Moving magnet's overwhelmingly the really common one. It's, it's a bit less esoteric. A lot of turntables are moving magnet. The real fancy uh, esoteric turntables are moving coil. Uh, with a 3045, you don't have to add anything. It's ready to go. Uh, for a phono connection. It's got a ground lug right here. So with any phono connection you have the RCA inputs and those are those are traditionally specified. It's got to say phono on the back in order to have that phono input because the, the voltage coming off the cartridge on the arm of the turntable is different than say a CD player or a Blu-ray player or something like that. And you have to have the ground lug. You have to ground it because uh, they have uh, possibly different. You, you have to ground electrically that, that signal coming off the cartridge. So look for the phono input. On the 3045, you have to add nothing. As long as it's moving magnet, you're fine. You're, you're, you're good to go. And you'll see that in a lot of our products. A lot of our products feature moving magnet input. Our new home theater receiver, for example, features the moving magnet uh, input. Last question. We've been going uh, for a while here. Last question. Um, about spacing, angle, and height. Great question, Chris. So for desktop speakers, you know, I have my, my P3s here. I sit on, on an adjustable chair, so I can be lower or, or higher depending on what my, you know, what, what's comfortable for my desk height and for typing. When you have a speaker that is close to you, but it's a little bit lower in height, right? If it's below maybe your collarbone in terms of height, a lot of speaker manufacturers recommend you do canter or, or cant or, or angle or tilt your speakers back a little bit so that they're really the baffle, the face of the speaker is kind of facing you. Kind of like you'd have, a, if you think of it like a mirror, it's facing you, the mirror is facing you. So a lot of desktop audio systems have the speakers canted back like that. So not all systems require it. Uh, it's, it's important to, 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 to tilt them back. Um, what you also want to try and play with, depending on the speaker configuration you have, is you may want to tow them in, as we, as we say, you tow them in. Angle them towards you a little bit. That can also make a big difference. Those two things, tilting them and towing them, will have a big difference in the upper frequencies, the high frequencies. So when you tilt them back or tow them in, you'll hear a big difference in that, in that high frequency performance. If you sit in one place at your desk and you never move, uh, it's a 
good idea to tilt them back and fill them in a little bit. Uh, or if you've got stands, uh, lots of different companies. We work with ISO Acoustics on our PSB brand. Um, you can use those to elevate them a little bit as well. So, you know, it, it takes some it takes some testing and, and you know, a trial and error. But yeah, tilting them tilting them back and tilting them in is great. This has been awesome. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much for the questions. Uh, thank you to Caleb and David and Brad and Gary and Chris and thanks to everybody that wrote in. If we didn't get to your question, uh, we will get to it electronically in the comment section. We really appreciate the opportunity to come to you live on Facebook. And I'm very sorry about the, about the delay. That one's on me. The delay is on me. So next time, uh, we won't have the delay issues. So again, thanks for tuning in. Visit us at nadelectronics.com. I'm going to put up some uh, social media channels here at the very end. Visit us at uh, nadelectronics.com and check us out uh, on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. I, I like the YouTube channel. It's a good channel. Uh, and that is uh, my time. I'm Marshall Curry. Thanks for tuning in. You guys have a good day.